I won't say that quite yet, but he's up there as far as one of the guys that has the awareness and instincts that's, that's elite. I mean, he has a knack of tracking the ball care. He has a feel, he has an unbelievable feel um, as far as defense concerns, scheme, what he's getting, he knows his way around the football field. He understands routes, um, identifying the routes early in the down and getting his eyes back on a quarterback late when he's in underneath his own coverage. Um, he uh, he understands leverage and man coverage. He does a good job of mixing up how to get on and off blocks and what tools to use and when to use them. He just he just has something you can't that that you can't teach. The instinct part of his game and his awareness you can't teach him, and that's his biggest strength. It's his brain. Um, and so you know, with that, he's able to do some things. You're like, how you do that? Well. Good Lord gave him that gift. Um, everybody don't have that. So um, I'm excited about Kiko, and that's the strength of his, and he needs, he needs to understand and know that so he can use that to his advantage. You've looked at Wesley from spring tape. Mm -hmm. How much of a margin is there, do you think, from where he is now to how good he can be? Well, not only him, I think all players, each and every year, they got to take leaps. They got to reinvent themselves each and every offseason to try to get better and try to improve not only as a football player but as a person um, on the field and off the field. And so I think from his, the season until spring, um, I think he made, you know, he made some small leaps physically. And I think from the beginning of spring practice when we installed a brand new defense, from his standpoint, to the end of spring practice, I think he made a, he made, he made quite a bit of a leap from an execution standpoint and really playing with confidence and understanding not only what his particular job was, but how also to play his game and execute the defense at the same time. And so when you have a young football player like Wesley and like some of these guys we got coming in, like a Malik Bryant and Popo Wild and Marcellus Pulliam and Bobby Washington, you know, I think the biggest transition for, for young players at this position, the linebacker position is, in high school, sometimes the sell out football, they can just run, strike, and hit. And in college, it's not as simple as that, you know. You, you, you're going to have to dissect and digest a complex playbook and be, out, be able to go out in that grass and execute. It is our job as coaches, my job as their coach, to make that as simple as possible, you know. Full-time coaches, coaching part-time players—they got a lot of different things on their plate. Social media, academic obligations, um, things, things that need to be done physically with their bodies in the weight room. Um, you know, they're, they're they're getting pulled every which way. So, um, you know, for, for for a young player like Wesley, um, he's going to continue to make leaps, strides. He's going to continue to get better. Um, he'll make he'll he'll be a lot better football player than he is tomorrow than he will be We're about to kick it off and play Miami of Ohio. So um, he's a hungry individual that really that really wants it. We line up with the ones tomorrow initially. Um yeah, we, we I got him slated we'll go with the ones. I can tell you this, the biggest thing in our in our room is a guy can be a first teamer one day and you'll be on fourth team the next day. Based on practice performance. Yeah, that, the competition yeah. in that room, it, 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 from top to bottom, it is tight. And I don't, and this is just me. I learned this, a wise man told me this. You step on the grass, you're a first teamer. I don't care where you line up initially. Because no one's not going to say, well, that guy was starting. If you're out there, if you're part of that 11 guys on that football field, you play for the University of Miami defense, you're first team. So they understand that. Two, two other super quick things for you. With Corey, if you determine at some point during August that uh, Francisco has won the mic job, it obviously hasn't happened yet, but if that happens, you want to play for Corey, maybe move him over to possibly play alongside Francisco. Is that an option at all? Well, that's not? something that not only we've done with Corey, Kiko, but each and every one of our linebackers, I cross trade them. So you, I'm not a really. I don't. I don't know what the future holds. I'm not a genie, but I want to be prepared for the storm. 
So the mice got to understand the wheels and the wheels got to understand the mice and they both need to understand the con the, the, the structure and the and and the, the defense as a whole and how the scheme fits. So throughout the entire summer, we did a little bit of spring ball. We've done a lot this summer. The wheels have played Mike and the mics have played wheel and they bounce back and forth um, each and every day. So but it's funny that you said that. And the reason why, you don't know what combination of what could happen. You don't want to be handicapped as a coach. You want to be able to play your best players. One last thing on Cloyd, the skills that appeal to you. You obviously know him well. Mm -hmm. And the reason why maybe he didn't play more in his previous stop than one of your previous stops. Well, um, KJ has always been a freakish athlete ever since we signed him back in 2000. I think it's 2020 was called the year. Um, he's a sub four five guy, can fly. Uh, right now he's right, right around two, in the two thirty range. You know he's ever been a six two, and so he always had the physical attributes. Played defensive end in high school, so him playing off the ball was going to be a transition for him. And each and every year he got a little bit better, a little bit better. Now he was behind. Dorian Etheridge, she's playing for the Falcons, and C.J. Airy for the Bears, and, and some NFL guys. And so he got a chance to learn from Momo Sonogo, who's an all-conference player. Uh, Yassir, um, Yassir Abdullah, playing for the Jaguars, doing well. So he had a chance to learn from some guys that was in front of him. And I've always said, if the light switch ever clicked, you better look out. And you kind of see, saw that until of last year. And you saw, you can see, you saw it in workouts this summer when we was doing, um, you know, when they was doing some of their activities that it's it's clicked, and so we're excited, we're very excited to see him this fall camp, and I'm excited to watch him and the rest of the guys, Wesley and Kiko and Corey and Kate and Keontra Smith and all the young you know, freshmen we got like Bobby and Malik and uh, Marcellius and uh, Popo run out there and play. It's going to be interesting. And I'm, it's going to be fun because you don't bring your A game, you could be a 1-1 one -one day, you can be a 4 the next day. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. With KJ, you said that when it's clicking, you touched on the speed. When it is clicking for him, what does it look like? When, when he's playing the way you want him to play, you know, what, what's he kind of do well? What's well, he bringing? Not him. Uh, you can put West in the same category because they're very similar as players. Um, because he can run so well and he can strike and he's explosive. If he's playing fast and confident and understand what's – just confident and understand what he's doing, it's a dynamic linebacker that could be very explosive and make a lot of plays. You touched on the competition quite a bit here, day-to-day um, -day stuff. How will those evaluations go? What you determine, you watch it on film – and essentially change it up the next – I mean, it's going to be like that? Is that your approach? To yes. What, well, what, what, what I do and what we – what I do and what we do, um, we, grade, we grade every practice. Everything's great um, in every practice. So um, at, each, at each and every practice, they're going to be graded from an execution standpoint, okay, you know, as far as, okay, are they doing their job and are they doing it um, to a to a certain standard that we set, and are they elevating that standard from an execution standpoint and doing their job? With that, they also got to be productive. Okay, you don't want you don't want a player to be in position can't finish. So it's a combination of of, of of are they executing within the concept of the defense or the scheme at a high level, and are they productive? Are they producing? Are they making plays? Are they are they wrecking havoc? Are they affecting the game? And so those get graded each and every day. And based off um, practice performance, um, the depth chart is, is, is as such, and it's subject to change each and every day. And the one beautiful thing, and it's beautiful, about the room, the linebacker room at the University of Miami in 2023, it's a lot of good, it's a lot of good football players that are dynamic, that, that has a skill set that's unique to the position, they're all are not the same, that are all hungry and eager to bring the best out of each other. And the biggest thing I love about our, our room 
right now is it's a brotherhood. And Coach, Coach Chris Ball has, uh, and we have a culture here that we're cultivating. And those guys are bought in and, and they're thick as thieves right now. And that's the biggest thing I'm excited about because they gonna hold each other accountable. They gonna lean on each other. And they know it's not about me, it's about we. And so um, we're excited about that. Um, as a defensive uh, coaching staff, and I keep, can't wait. Again, I keep it's like hitting uh, hitting it over and over again. I can't wait to watch them play because they put the work in, they grind it, they worked hard, they've done everything we've asked them to do, um, and um, they're excited. We're excited for them to go out and see all the hard work they've put in come to fruition, and we'll see what happens. You know, I'm not going. Well, this could happen. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. You know, that's why we roll the ball out and we practice. And, uh, you know, there was, a you know, guys that were in place, a depth chart, obviously, going into this. Um, that could and probably will change based off practice performance. And it's what have you done for me lately within the now, not what you did last year or two years ago. What have you done right now in the present? And that's what matters most.